brothers and sisters, Brother Charlie, and it's Psalm 145, and I, I just pray a blessing. You know why? Because I got blessed reading this a couple of times this morning. And, you know, I maybe I take an example from, from the man that uh, some people hate, some people love. But God commands us to love everybody and forgive everybody. And I, I actually saw a different side of Donald Trump last night. And you could see that he's been humbled. And sometimes that's what it takes. Sometimes God has to humble us and get us through a situation to show us that, really, really, I've been there. From going off motorcycles to having guns put on my chin, knives on my throat. I understand being humble. Because once I wasn't humble. But once God gets a hold of you, you begin to change. And, and this psalm is so prophetic for all of us. So I pray that the reading of this psalm in all of our hearts and people that are, they go on and they see the uh, ministry of salvation. It's not about money. It's about being obedient to God's word. And you're going to hear it in, in the psalm here of David, you know. It's King David's psalm of praise. And that's powerful. Because that's all, all God wants is for us to praise him. He inhabits the praise of his people. So I, I pray that we become a blessing not only to the Lord, but to the kingdom of God for one another. That we would teach this to people. That Christians would get back to their first love. The way they felt when they first had that experience in knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And then the enemy comes in and tries to distract all of us. He does it all the time. You know? I see people lifting up things that I don't lift up anymore. I saw it during that 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 conference last night, the closing of the conference. It's one thing to believe. It's another thing to have a closer walk with God. And the only way you can have that closer walk is to read the instruction book. And God will give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So David says here today, and I'm honored and humbly, humbly, when I read this today, all I could say throughout the read was, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for not giving up on me with all the different sins I committed over all the years of my life, you know? Thank you that you shed your blood for a sinner who's learning how to walk with you every day. The word of God says, I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Let that hit your heart. You want to be a man after God's own heart? That's who David was. Once again, I will extol thee, my God, O king, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. And listen to verse two. I, I got excited this morning because this is my life right now in Christ. And it should be everybody's life in Christ. Every day will I bless thee and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Why? Verse three. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. You just pause there in your heart and realize what David is saying to all of us this morning. Unsearchable. 
I'm really loved verse four this morning because we're part of a generation. I'm an older generation than the younger people growing up and some of the young people that come in and listen to this prayer group and get the teachings of the prayer group. And I'm moved in the spirit because people send me hearts, people send me thank yous. There's people that thank me every day when they get the message because it doesn't return void. When you speak Jesus and you praise him and you lift his name up, God does the work he has to do wherever you're sending the word of God. I, I, I love it. One generation shall praise thy works to another. I praise God to young people. I looked at a woman a couple of nights ago and I said, how old do you think I am? She was only 30 years old. Prior to that, I looked at a young man that was 20 years old. And I told him about Jesus Christ. He was clueless. Because that generation doesn't have Jesus. Boy, did this scripture hit me hard this morning about what God's intentions are and what we're all supposed to be doing. One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty, mighty acts. Well, you got to be walking in the spirit to be able to declare the works of the Lord. And I'm talking about the full gospel. I'm a witness to every part of the full gospel God has allowed me in my short life to see his glory come down by reading the word of God, obeying the word of God, putting the word of God into action, and watching his grace operate, even amongst people that didn't have faith until they heard the gospel and they received it. I didn't start out with a building. I, I preached in other people's churches. I preached in the streets. The whole world became an audience. I said to a lady yesterday, I don't go on Facebook that much. The only reason I go on Facebook is to go fishing. Fishing for men and women to get them saved. Not everybody on Facebook is your friend, and not everybody on Facebook is saved. And then you go further than that. The church, you don't know the people. You don't go home with them. You don't know what they do morning, noon, and night. You don't even know if they get up and read a Bible. But some people you do know. You'll know them by their fruit. I love the fellowship. Ernie loves the fellowship. I think everyone that's here loves the fellowship. If you're not working, it's a great place to be. You don't have to get in a car. You can just get with a bunch of people that believe in Jesus Christ. Bear your burdens to one another. Get people praying, you know, and God will make it happen if it's in his will. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of the wondrous works. I'd like to be a fly on a lot of people's walls. And you would like to be a fly on my wall, too. Just because you meet me on Facebook or, or Zoom doesn't mean you know me. But if you listen to what I'm preaching, you'll get to know God. Because we're supposed to be bond servants of the Most High God when you become a believer. You're supposed to be about the Father's work. And men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts, and I will declare thy greatness. So I pray that everybody starts declaring the greatness 
of God right now because so many people are hurting. We see it all the time when we're out there. And thou shalt abundantly utter the memory of thy greatness and shall sing of thy righteousness. So what we do here in this little prayer group is God's will. Every day we come into his courts with praise and thanksgiving. And I thank God for a couple of the people here that come in and help me if I need to be backed up, that someone else can take the ball and run with it. It's a body ministry. You're not an island by yourself. You know, we share the word of God. We talk about the word of God. I got I got plenty of things being set up right now to help people. But like I said last week and the week before, appointments. It's not your, your work. It's God's work. And other people like myself. It's like I said to the woman yesterday, I have family I don't even get to see because everybody's got a demonic problem. That's what happens in deliverance. Very few people in the church know how to deal with spiritual warfare. You can go here, there, and over there. If you're not getting help, it ain't going to come until you start crying out to God. And if you're around people that believe in this ministry, you need to sit there and listen a while, make appointments, and get prayer. I've been doing this for 38 and a half years. Nobody, no demon's going to waste my time anymore. You know? Because if you don't repent, you don't get delivered. Sometimes repentance is like uh, 2 Chronicles 7.14 says, sometimes repentance is hearing God's word and repenting and submitting for prayer. James says, confess your faults to one another and pray that you may be healed. I didn't make the story up. I read the book. And because I read the book, I became a doer of the book, people. It says here, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. What does that mean in your heart? That's verse 8 if you're not following. So you can open a Bible later and reread this wonderful chapter. I don't need much of an opinion here. Listen to God's word this morning. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. Verse 9, the Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. Verse 10, all thy works shall praise them. All thy works shall praise thee. Okay? Not fun getting older, because I'm just sitting here with a Bible in my lap, people. You know, and I hear it all the time. I tell my wife all the time, you know, my eyes, my eyes. I didn't even clean my glasses today, but I want to praise God, because I got a good night's sleep. And, and, and the Lord... Like he said in nine, he's good to all, and his mercies are over all of God's works. So basically, we're to get up and praise him. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord. And then it brings us into the picture on the, the back end of verse 10 this morning. And he says, and thy saints, thy saints, that means all of God's people, it's plural, and saints is not a capital. There's no glory for man. We serve God. We're servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to learn to trust and obey. I played that song, We Need You Every Hour. If you're singing a song like that, you better be seeking the goodness of God. Don't be a hypocrite. Get on team Jesus and start becoming a doer of the word of God. Go out there and start winning some souls. Pass the ammunition. Share the word of God with people. Share good teaching, good pastors. 
If something moves your heart, send it to somebody else. Maybe it'll move their heart. There's plenty of good preachers. I listen to quite a few counselors because the Bible tells me to. Technology's awesome. We're able to, to watch teachings of people from years ago, audios that people that were never on television, but they recorded radio ministries. There's so much. I learned that through all the years I've been seeking God because it tells us in the Bible to seek him with your whole heart. That's every part of our being, brothers and sisters. Why? They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power. How many people are really telling other people about the power of God? Because people today are curious when they hear that. They don't want it bad enough to follow the instruction book. They want somebody else to do it for them. To make known, it says here, to make known to the sons of man his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. That means we're supposed to be speaking to people about Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God. That thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. In other words, it never ends. And the dominion endure throughout all generations. That means from the, the beginning when Christ walked to the end when he returns. We're supposed to be speaking Jesus in every generation. Boy, it sure don't look that way in America today. But I think there's going to be a change. Why? Because the fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. You don't get puffed up with it. You get up every day and you praise God. You thank God for the salvation of souls. Because if you're not praying that way, your faith is really not even in the, the kingdom ballpark yet. You're not convinced that God loves you and whom he loves he corrects. So being corrected is a good thing. Discipline is good. Going back to the word, it says the Lord upholdeth all that fail and raise it up all those that be bowed down. He raises up. That's why I love that song, Fall on Your Knees, because we don't fall on our knees enough sometimes. We talk about it, but really, it's when you begin to become a doer of God's word. That's when the glory starts to happen. That's when God, who says, I, I know what you need before you ask. That's when you're, he, he says, I won't leave you, forsake you. I won't let you go. You ain't going to get away from me. That's powerful. When you really understand who God is. You know, verse 15 today, the eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. So they look to God for the desire. I said to a person yesterday, I prayed for the desire of the heart. You know, because people are seeking God today. When people are in fellowship, you pray for them. I got a man I want to pray for at the end of this read today. Thou openest up thy hand and satisfiest the desire of every living thing. He even provides for the birds of the air. You guys all know that. But it says it right here. He says, thou, David's talking to God, openest thine hand and satisfy us the desire of every living thing. Why? Because the Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. If you were up early enough to catch the first song today, it was about holiness. Holy, holy, holy. 
singing to God, and nothing but the blood of Jesus was parlayed with that worship song this morning. And I picked it out because of this psalm. In fact, almost every song I put up today, I asked God to show me what he wanted to hear this morning. And it's all about us trusting in the word of God. It's all about Christ in us, the word of God. That's when you know the fruit of anybody, when you see the, the person that loves God becomes a doer of God's word. Once again, the Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. 18, the Lord is near unto them that call upon him. So David's showing us something here. God is teaching us here. He wants to be in a relationship with you and I. It's pretty personal, brothers and sisters, that if you submit your plans to the Lord, you can succeed. If it's going to edify and build up the, the world, God's in it. God, God created everything, and he wants everyone to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Nobody can refute that that's a believer. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. In other words, you, you stand or sit or kneel or lay fat on your face in awe of him. My oldest story from Businessman Full Gospel when I was a young Christian was when I heard the voice of God echo in the auditorium, and this is the power of my son, not the power of men, I went to my knees. Because that voice just penetrated my whole being. And I'm a big boy, you know? I, I've said that to people. I don't bow to anybody except the Lord Jesus Christ. And I said that before I was saved. And I didn't know God. Now, now I cry out to God morning, noon, and night. How's this? I cry out in the middle of the night when I wake up. And I ask God, what do you want me to do? How, how do you want me to walk? I mean, it's, it's all here in the book, people. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also hears their cry and will save them. That's a scripture you should highlight in your Bible. And when you're out there ministering to people, open the good book and say, hey, look, read this to me. Let the word of God be the double-edged sword. Verse 20 today, the Lord preserveth all them that love him. Do you love God? Did you hear some of the songs I played this morning? I love you, Lord. I love you. I love you. I love you. When you're singing that to God, don't you think he knows it? He inhabits the praise of his people. But all the wicked, he will destroy. It's in the same verse. Let me read that to everybody again. The Lord preserveth all them that love him. You know, Jesus said, you'll know them by their fruit. But all the wicked will he, God, God will destroy. That's why it's important to win souls. Nobody wants to see anyone go to that place called the lake of fire. And it's real, people. If you've been given the ability to be in hand-to-hand -hand combat, the demons know who Jesus is. They also know the lake of fire. They know everything that is in this book is truth, and they don't want you reading it. 
You don't have to follow politics. You need to read the word of God. That's where your safety, that's where your comfort is. It's not in man. It's in every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And there is no other place to look for that information except in the word that became flesh. And God was so gracious. He, he taught us how to listen. He taught us how to read. He's Holy Spirit guides us so that we, we don't get separated from the word of God in our heart. And we begin to walk with God when we believe. Just like a little baby. You take the, the milk, the baby steps until you get the, the teeth growing that you want to chew in and meditate on scripture. And start to trust and obey. It's a real relationship. In closing in this chapter, and this is for all of us, brothers and sisters. David said it. You want to you be a man or a woman after God's own heart? Listen to the final verse here. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. What? How, how could I do anything except read a, a little paragraph here out of the commentary today? That's how good the word of God is. When you're in love with God, you will praise him every day. You talk about religion. God's not a religion. He's a living Lord. David, David, once again, King David extols the Lord for his greatness. Grace, goodness, and glory. All you had to do was listen to some of them songs I was playing today. Maybe I'll, I'll roll that roll a couple of times over the next week for those that didn't get the fullness of praise it was there in this prayer group this morning. I know because the Holy Spirit activates, you know. He stirs us up. Living water begins to flow out of each and every one of us when we get excited about our Savior. The glory and generosity. If you are having a hard time praising the Lord today, this should help you get started. God's people will praise him forever. So we had better learn to do it day by day. What a commentary today. You know, I, I just love it. Because it's not the first time I've read this psalm. And it's certainly, as long as I live, I will declare the word of God, the works of God the goodness of God, the deliverance from evil spirits that if you listen to some Christians, you shouldn't have any, then what's talking out of people that are born again, that are seeking help, that are confessing their A Christian don't sin? Yes, they do. We all sin. We wouldn't have needed a savior if we could walk in our righteousness. Going back to commentary, David extols the Lord as an encouragement to all of us. Members of each generation need to learn to praise the Lord. So your praise is an example and a witness to them that are not praising the Lord. Are others growing in their worship because of you? Woo! Hits me right to my bone. Because if you're not acknowledging God in all your ways, how, how's, any gonna, how's anybody going to know what your faith is? There's a lot of closet Christians. Remember, God called us to be sent out, to be a light in darkness. David hears all God's works because he's praising him. Nature takes on a new meaning and a new beauty when you realize this. 
I mean, incorporate the Lord and the Word of God, all of us, daily in our lives. That's another reason why I have the daily house of prayer, people. When you live a life of praise, you have the Lord's help in every situation. Even if you stumble, he helps you out. If you're hungry, he feeds you. If you call, and we played that song a couple of days ago, draw me close to you. When we sing to God and we praise him, he inhabits us. He becomes part of us. Your heart melts into his heart. What a relationship that is to worship God in spirit and in truth. And no wonder. And David was a king. No wonder why David bless the Lord so much. There's, there's nothing else I could say about the book of Psalms that you guys haven't, that have been with me for the whole role of this. Some of you have really been there. And even when you're not there, all you got to do is, you know, I used to teach this years ago. If you can't get to the prayer group on a certain read, sit at home and read it. Get addicted to the word of God. There's so many benefits from hearing God's word and putting it into action in our lives. Just like I say, when, when people are bearing one another's burdens, the devil plays everybody, brothers and sisters. And that's why you got to get serious in spiritual warfare. You know, God knows the heart. And if you're diligently seeking God, he rewards you. You'll get to where God wants you to be. So once again, thank you for listening to me read Psalm 145 today. May the Lord bless you. May you open up to being that man or woman that God is trying to get you to be. And remember something. I said to a person yesterday, person wrote me, you are very considerate, and I want you to be my friend. And, and you've got a lot of wisdom. And I laughed. And I said, well, you can start with Romans 12, 1 and 2. And that, that blew the person away. Because I didn't know this person was a believer until the day before. And, 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 these people come to me online, so I know God's doing something, because when I started this journey online, I didn't know how to do the internet. I didn't know anything about Facebook, uh, computers, or anything else. I just said, I'm going to go fishing for souls. The same thing Jesus told his disciples. They were just regular people, and he said, you're going to be you were fishers of fish. Now you're going to be fishers of men. And that's what we're all supposed to be. We're all ambassadors. We're supposed to be about the Father's business for the rest of our lives. So look at life today as a divine appointment for you and I. And thank God that your name's in the Lamb's book. And you'll get there. Open your Bibles and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you and help you. Ask that living water to flow through you, that you could be a vessel for God's glory. And, you know, it goes back to, in these, in my name, these signs will follow in my name. They will, you'll be casting out demons. You'll be laying hands on the sick. Some of you will be praying in tongues. And remember that. It's just the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It didn't stop in the first century. Nothing stops until God returns. And, and, and like I said, people, we're, we're praying for salvation of souls and an extension. So that's what I'm giving you today. And God bless you all.